welcome back to another video. So today we're going to continue with this adorable little bunny here that I started coloring a few days ago. I did a fur tutorial and showed you how to use grayscale as a guide while coloring in fur. This adorable little bunny is from the Rachel Mintz book. It is called Friendship and I did a recent flip through of this book and y'all asked me to please color one of the images in here and I was really drawn to these images so I really did want to color it. So this is probably going to end up being maybe a three or four part series and I plan on possibly doing a background as well after I get the rest of the cute little bunny and everything surrounding him all colored in. If you would like to follow along with this color along and do all of the tutorials right along with me, you will find a link down in the description box below where you can grab the digital copy of this book and I'll also have a coupon code down there for you so that you can get 33% off. So I believe that that makes the entire PDF version or digital version of the book only about $3.33, which is a fantastic deal. So I'm going to be using my Derwent Ink Tents to color in the rest of this adorable little bunny. When I did the fur tutorial, I used Prisma colors, but we're going to switch it up a little bit today. And I just wanted to do what I wanted to do. <laughs> so I'm going to use my Derwent Ink Tents because they have not received any love in quite some time. Okay, so I have my Derwent brushes here and my Derwent brushes. You can buy these in a three pack on Amazon. Everything you see in this video, as always, will be linked down in the description box below. But you get one, two, and three, and they are all different sizes. I'll probably be using, okay, that's two. So you could see the size of this one here, it's a little bit bigger. And then of course three is gonna be even bigger. But for this, I'll probably be using one for the most part. And if you can see that, this one is just very uh, thin and pointy. Let me go ahead and show you the third one as well. So you can see that that one is longer and more flat and that would be for larger areas on your coloring page. So we'll see how this goes. I've not used these pencils in quite some time. Okay, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and start with the flower today and I put together a couple a couple uh, colors and I wanna make that flower sort of like oranges and yellows and I've got a darker color to sort of bring all of that in together and add some really pretty uh, shadows. But I've got my burnt orange and then cadmium orange and then this one is cadmium yellow so I'm gonna show you in this video exactly how I use these uh, intense pencils and they really are wonderful so I like to lay my highlight down first in all the areas that I want a highlight and so I'm just gonna do that in every one of these now with these pencils once you add water the first time, it adds a permanent layer or a permanent first layer. And you can always come back and add more color and I'm gonna show you how to do that. But I like to make sure that I add enough pigment down on the paper when I do even my first layer. So this way when I come back with the water brush, it has something to be able to pick up. And I really love these just because, you know, you all know that I use Prismacolors a whole lot, but I don't know, I just wanted to do something a little bit different today. And these are much different than using something like Prismacolors. And you sort of get to play with water a little bit, which makes it so much more fun. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and get this color filled in everywhere on this flower. And I'm just laying it wherever I feel like laying it. And you can see that I'm actually laying it right over some of the places where I laid that yellow. And I'm gonna put a little bit here at the tips and maybe a little bit more over here and then down here at the tip of this petal too. Okay, so right now I only have three colors and I don't know if I'm going to come back and bring in more colors or if I'm just going to leave it this way. I'll see how it looks once I add the water and after all of the colors come together and I'm just laying this color right over some of the areas where I laid that orange 
just because I want to make sure that I've got enough depth and dimension. Okay, so now we're going to start with the water brush. Like I said, I'm going to use the one brush. And I am going to just, I have a piece of scrap paper over here and I'm just going to squeeze it until I see the water come up. You could see the water right there. Hopefully you could see that on camera. But you could see the water and we don't want too much. I just want to use a very little bit. And again, this is the Spring Hill paper that I'm using. And I tested this out before the video to make sure that it was going to work well on this paper and it worked beautifully on this paper. I always like to test everything out. Now you can see here that I'm only going over where I've got the darker colors and I'm not yet coming into the spaces where I have the yellow. If I go a little bit further and I go into that yellow, it will drag my orange into that yellow. So now I'm coming back after I wiped off my brush and I'm going to sort of blend that yellow in and outward to the other color. When you're using these ink tense pencils, you always want to blend your lightest color outward into the darkest color. And just make sure you're taking, if you get any of the uh, darker color on the brush, just make sure that you are taking it off and just using your um, scrap paper to wipe it off. And you can see how I keep getting some of that orange on there. And so I am just, when you see my hand leave the paper, I'm just um, rubbing the brush over there on the side on the other paper just to get rid of some of that. But look how pretty this is. And you can see when you um, add the water, how intense these pencils get once the water is added. Like it looks really, really light and then you come back and you add that little bit of water and it's just like pow. <laughs> I really, really love that about these. Now I'm gonna wait a little bit just for it to dry because you wanna make sure that it's dry before you come back and you add your second layer. But these pencils are actually ink based and so your first layer is going to create your base and it's gonna dry and create a permanent layer. And then you're able to come back and go right over that and add more highlights and depth and dimension and all of that. So they're really, really neat. And they are so much fun to just play around with. Okay, so let's go ahead and grab our yellow and add a little bit more of this here. And you could see that it just lays right over. And these are pretty hard pencils, so you're not gonna have to worry if you're using a little bit harder pressure about them breaking, but they have a chalky feel at the same time. I really love the way that they feel when they go down on the paper. And then we're gonna come back with our orange that we used. I think it was, yeah, cadmium orange. So we are going to lay a little bit more of that and you can see just by looking here that it is pretty much just going to lay right over the top and the colors should blend together really beautifully. And then when I come back with my darkest color, it's just going to blend right in there as well. And I could see a couple areas where it doesn't look as smooth, so I'm just adding a little bit more color in there. And then I'm going to come back with my darkest color, which is really going to make all of this pop. And then once I add more water, this is really going to stand out. Now I'm adding more color like over here where you could see uh, these two petals are laying over this petal. I wanna make sure that I add quite a bit of pigment right in here because I wanna give it that look that these two petals are laying over the other one. And I like to go over the centers where the artist drew in just some natural lines that you would see in the petals. I always like to go over those and make those a little bit darker just to kind of intensify them, giving it a much more realistic look. And then I'm just going over all of the grayscale or the darker lines, just because I really don't want to be able to see any of that once I'm done. Now you can use these and not even use any water at all if you didn't want to. You could just use them as though they were just, you know, your typical colored pencils. But I really, really like to add water just because when you add the water, 
they just pop so much more. Oh, I think I missed one little spot over here. Let me go ahead and add some more of this. And I might go ahead and grab another color. I don't know yet. We'll have to see. You all know that I never know what I'm doing or where I'm going to go with this until I add a few layers and I start bringing all of the colors together. And I just like to see what it's going to look like. But I may want to add something that is a little bit more uh, darker orangey brown to this. So let's go ahead now and I'm going to start here where the highlight is and I'm going to go over the highlight and I'm going to pull it out into the darker area and I'm just going to try to make sure these blend in really nicely. Right here this one is so small and I want to kind of pull that lighter color into the darker color and then I'm going to come over here and do this one and here is the darker a little bit more of the darker color and I'm going to pull that down but I'm going to um, brush off my brush because I'm trying to make that blend look a little bit better there. Now I'm gonna come over here and I had added some dark down in here, so I wanna go over the dark. And I don't want to, like I said, pull it too far into the light. And I'm gonna come over here in the light and I'm gonna pull it into that dark. And I am blotting my brush off on the side after every single one. And I had quite a bit here and I just want to intensify that color to just really intensify that shadow there. And then I'm gonna come over here where I have the highlight and I'm gonna pull that out into the darker color. Now these are a really fun medium to use and play around with. If you just kinda of wanna play around with watercolors, but you are kind of not ready for watercolors or like watercolor pencils, these I feel like are a much easier medium to learn how to use than using actual watercolor pencils. So if you're kind of on the verge, you might want to start with these and then move into watercolor pencils because the way that these dissolve and move around, it's a little bit different and a little bit easier than using watercolor pencils because I think the watercolor pencils sort of, um, sort of just dissolve a lot easier and move around a lot more. And I feel like these move around a lot less and then you can just keep layering them on top if you want to. And then if you wanted to add even more dimension when you come back in here, um, you can come back and you can do that. And then you don't even have to add water. You can just add the color where you want it and then you can just leave it if you wanted to. Like I could come back in here with an even darker color and go over all of these areas if I wanted to, just to create more detail in my flower. And I don't even have to come back and do anything with water. Okay, so I went and grabbed Saddle Brown and I'm gonna see if I could just add a little bit more shadows in here. And of course, I'm gonna have to do the center of the flower as well. And so I don't wanna to add too much of this but I just want to be able to do this just to add a little bit more depth. And then I'm gonna come back with my burnt orange and I think I'm just going to go over that just to mix these colors together. Yeah, I think that's making quite a bit of a difference. And if you make sure that you're using just a very little bit of water, you can continue to keep coming back and adding the layers as you want but don't add too much water because if you add too much water, you're just going to end up damaging the paper and you don't wanna do that. But I think that gave it just a little bit more of what I was looking for. Maybe I should use the yellow in the center of the flower too, and then maybe add some browns into it. I think that will maybe make it come together really pretty. So I'm gonna add some of the same yellow that I used in the petals and I'm just going to put that there in the center. And what do I wanna do now? Maybe I could use a little bit of a different yellow. Okay, so this one here is Sicilian yellow. This one is a little bit more of a muted yellow, so I'm just going to add a little bit of that in there. It's a little bit darker and a little bit more muted. And so now we sort of have our highlight and then a little bit of this darker yellow over here to give it some more depth. I think that looks really pretty. And this is one of the colors that I picked to use down here for what I think looks like it may be sand or something, but I'm gonna color it as sand. I don't know if it's sand or dirt. It's probably dirt, whatever, but I'm going to make it look pretty. <laughs> 
So let me see. I think I need a little bit of brown in there now. So the brown that I was using was the saddle brown. And so I'm going to add some of that right in here. Oh, I think that looks really good. And I think that I do need to add some water. So I'm brushing off my brush really good and I am squeezing it to get a little bit more water over there to really get this ink to spread. So I'm gonna start in the center and I'm gonna move outward. And you could see how beautifully all these colors just came together. And I'm brushing my brush off and I'm gonna start back in that center and I'm gonna pull that down just to get rid of this line here and make sure they blend in together really nicely. How pretty. And I don't even think we need another layer. Maybe a little bit later after it dries, I might come back with another layer, but that just looks so pretty. <laughs> I love it, I really love these ink tense pencils they're just amazing so if you look right down here you could see there is a little stem hanging off of the flower so we are going to color that in and that's going to be a really easy color there i think that i'm going to just color it in green and i have some colors laying over here it's a very small area, but I still want some of this to really stand out so that you could actually see the stem there once I come back and color in the clothes. So I've got sherbet lemon and apple green and felt green. So I'm just going to add some of, some of this in here. And I'm not necessarily following the grayscale. I'm just kind of doing my own thing. And then I'm gonna lay the other green right in here and maybe right down in here. Actually, I think I want my darkest color to go right down in there. So the darkest color right in there, and then a little bit of this here, and then I want to just kind of cover up some of the gray lines there. So let me go ahead and get my brush, and of course I'm going to use the number one for this one too because the air, it is such a small area, and like I did earlier, I'm going to have to come right back in here starting at the center and move up into the darker color. And then I just want to intensify the color here just a little bit. And I think that's all that really needed. So let's go ahead and maybe um, color in what would be the sand down here. And I don't know how much, how far we're gonna get into this video because I kind of wanted it to be an ink tense tutorial as well, but I hope to continue this tutorial with ink tents. Let's go ahead and come down here. And I have some colors already that I set aside to do what looks to be kind of, I guess, dirt down here. And then it's got like a few stray pieces of grass over here to the back. And I don't know exactly uh, what I'm gonna do exactly yet with the grass. If I, I may do them kind of like greens with browns. I don't know yet. Um, let's go ahead and get some of this colored in though. And this is going to be pretty quick and easy. So here I'm gonna follow the grayscale. And I've got Sicilian yellow and I'm just laying this all in these areas here where I see the lightest gray scale. And then I think I'm gonna spread it out just a little bit beyond where the gray scale is. And when I'm using the Intense Pencils, I do always like to lay my lightest color first just because I like to um, sort of preserve that area before I come back in and lay the other colors. Now this one is called Mustard, and it looks very different when it lays down on the paper than it does from what you're seeing on the um, tip of the pencil or the lead of the pencil. It looks almost green when you look at this, but when I lay it down on the paper, it doesn't look green. We'll see how much that changes when I come back and add some water. So I'm laying this one, I'm not really following the grayscale because I'm laying this one just around where I laid the other color just to blend it in to the other one. And I want to save some of that grayscale for my much darker color. And right here I'm going to actually go over this grayscale because there's a much darker grayscale over here. So 
in all actuality, I'm just kind of doing my own thing and not necessarily following what the grayscale is telling me to do. And if you watched my fur tutorial, you know um, that you don't always have to follow the grayscale to be exact. You don't have to necessarily lay your darkest color in the darkest areas. You can um, just sort of move around and lay the colors as you want them. And now I am going to, I'm going to blend these in with water first, I think, before I come back with my darkest color. And I'm just squeezing my brush off to the side, making sure I get enough water on the tip of my brush. And then I'm going to start in the lightest area, just like I showed you before, and I'm going to work out to the darkest. And I'm only going where the, once I've gone into the darkest color, I'm only going where the darkest color is until I come back and clean off my brush. So I don't want it to dry, so I'm going to clean off my brush just a little bit. Now I'm going to come back into the lighter areas and pull that into the darker. Oh, and see now I went into the darker, so I have to make sure that I am not going to go back into the lighter. And then clean off my brush and come back and go over the lighter areas. Okay, so that's good enough for my first layer. And we are gonna come back with the darker. And I think after looking at this, I may pull down my lighter color just a bit because I don't know, it doesn't look like there's enough coverage here. So I'm gonna change that up a bit. Okay, so now I have this color called Oak and I'm going to put this in all of the areas where it is darker or where I want it to look darker. And I'm gonna add just some color in some of the areas where I want the color. And so you'll see me sort of laying it over where the other colors are just because I wanna make this look much more realistic and more natural. And then of course I'm gonna come back with the water and I'm going to blend all of this in but see what a difference that makes once you come back and you add that darkest color. And I think that once I come back with the water, that color is going to change just a little bit. So let me go, I think it's dry. So I think that I can come back and maybe add some more of those other colors. So I'm gonna come back with my mustard and I am going to lay that mustard back in the areas where I had it and sort of pull it right into that darkest color that I laid down. And I'm gonna do the same thing here on the other side. You could see how different that makes it look. And I think I wanna come back with my Sicilian yellow now. And I'm gonna add a little bit of that. And then hopefully once I come back, I'm just using this to just kind of even it out, see down here at the bottom. But hopefully now once I come back and I Blend it all together, it will look really, really nice. Okay, so now I am going to start with my lightest color again. I'm gonna clean my brush off, and I think I need to make sure it's a little bit more wet there. Okay, so now I'm gonna come back where I laid that lighter color, and I'm gonna move that into the darker color. Wow, look at what a difference that made. I have to brush it off because I got some more of my lighter color down here. And then I'm going to pull it into the darker. Look how that just made it look so much more realistic. Oh, I just love these pencils. Okay, so I'm going over my darkest colors. And I've got some of my lighter colors down there, so I'm trying to be very, very careful. Come all the way out here. And now I need to clean off my brush. And I'm going to come over here where I've got the darker color and sort of blend all that in. And this Spring Hill paper has been amazing for these 
ink tense pencils and that's because they're not your typical watercolor they're not watercolor pencils like I said earlier they are ink based and so they perform much differently than a watercolor okay so we finished all of that area and I think I made it look like a really pretty kind of dirt <laughs> It's got all the highlights in the right places and then the darker color all in the right places and I really like the way that it looks. So our adorable little bunny is really starting to come together and I really enjoyed showing you all how to color with the Derwent Ink Tense pencils. They are amazing pencils. I love how my flower turned out. I really, really love it. And as you can see, you probably don't need as many layers with these uh, Derwent Ink Tense pencils as you would need with another medium like Prismacolors or something. And the Spring Hill paper really, really worked wonderfully with it. And I mean, everything is all Already dry and I don't have any like my papers not really crinkled or anything like that from the water just make sure when you use them you use very little water so that you could keep coming back and adding more layers as you want to and going over them with more water and just blending all of those um, you know all of those colors together so that you can create something beautiful and they don't really have that much of a learning curve I mean you just take what you know about colored pencils and you apply them to these the only difference is that you can use water with them and really see the colors come to life once that water touches the ink in these pencils they're really really amazing and I will have links down below for the ink tense pencils they have been running at a really good deal lately on Amazon some of you have been able to pick them up for only ninety four dollars and ninety nine cents I don't know if they're still that price but that is a steal because I know I paid way more than that for mine I think around hundred and twenty dollars or so so I'll see you in the next part of the video which will be part three this is part two if you've not yet seen the fur, fur tutorial that's linked up in the upper right hand corner go check that one out and if you would like to download this adorable little color book I'll have the link down in the description box below so you can grab that and use my coupon code to get it for only three dollars and thirty three cents which is a really great deal so I will see you in the next video happy coloring bye